We head straight to our first major conversation and we're looking at the continuous fear of scarcity and the fact that the queues have actually returned. Now, uh, most interesting is the fact that you have the black market operators making a lot. So yes, the black market petrol is booming in most parts of the country as the scarcity of the product persists amid the promise of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NMPC, um, that said that it started the week with the assurance to Nigerians that the distribution of premium motor spirit, that's the PMS, would soon be normalized. And uh, NNPC had promised additional 2.3 billion liters to the existing 1 billion liter to address the issue of scarcity. Now, scarcity of petrol, like we earlier mentioned, is there despite the government's promise that petrol will be or all over the petrol scarcity uh, would be over uh, but this continues in different parts of the country now on the other hand you have the nigerian union of petroleum and natural gas workers nupeng directed its members to start compiling names of marketers hoarding premium motor spirit that's the pms and also selling above official depot price meanwhile you also have fuel scarcity faced by uh, countries that might just, there's also another report saying that the fuel scarcity uh, we're faced with in the country might just be prolonged because the vessels that brings refined products into the country around the Ukraine and Russia are likely to face delay uh, following all of the crisis that's happening in Russia and Ukraine. Now, to make sense of all of this, to understand why we still have uh, the scarcity of the product and why we still have uh, people not selling this product at the stipulated price of 165 naira per liter and why there's so much business for the black marketers is what we're looking at this morning. Joining us is Mr. Douglas Ike, who is the chairman of Ipman, uh, the Bini Depot. I'm hoping that we're able to be uh, connected with Mr. Douglas and we hope that he can give us because he's part of the value chain and maybe he has an idea as regards what's going on because at, at this point in time, no minister, how, no, no information whatsoever, or statement from the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Now, prior to this time, we also need to remember the fact that uh, Nigerians had complained and there's been a lot of complaint about the importation of adulterated petrol into the country that cost a lot of peasants. But if you live in Lagos, and other parts of the country, you want to attest to the fact that, you know, the queues have actually returned. And this has also increased the fare of transportation and the traffic in Lagos is unusual. I mean, coupled with the fact that uh, the traffic is usually very, very high and intense. Uh, it's a lot to actually go through with at this point in time. Uh, some people say it's such a difficult time to be a Nigerian. Uh, but we're hoping that, uh, do we have Mr. Yes, we Douglas do. Ike? We do. Yes, we have uh, Douglas Ike, Chairman of Ipman Benin Depot. Good morning to you, Mr. Douglas EEK. Are you there, please? Mr. Douglas, it's good to have you join us. Okay, so um, like we have really mentioned, can you please tell us, uh, there seem to be, or there is fuel scarcity across uh, some parts of the country. And some people say that, depot owners are saying that uh, they had actually paid for this product, but up until this moment, they have not received the consignment. And that's on the one hand. Some people are also saying that, you know, you have the black market uh, operators actually booming in the midst of this scarcity, you still have the long queues and you also have some fueling station selling above the actual pump price. So this is a lot to understand and we, we, we can't really phantom what is going on. Despite the fact that NMPC had mentioned that uh, they were going to make this product available, we're looking at 2.3 billion liters of petrol. Uh, can you quickly tell us what you know about the scarcity of petrol in Nigeria? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, like Sam uh, rightly said, uh, the devil owners have said that they are waiting for their consignment based on that, you know, the truth of the matter is that the first case came to a season based on the on the uh, uh, theaters that was stuck in this country. And so what I mean is that the point that it's not up to stop, not to up standard. Yeah, so the truth of the matter is this issue of safety will be a thing of fact. So 
very soon because the MMPC has assured that the billions of people that will be coming to work, that will be coming to come to soon and later. So for me, any methodology that I'm telling uh and the size you are telling them. So we decided that some state is just product. So it's not very much of that is uh is very good speed here, stays inside the end of the cycle, to get to the uh so, so if anyone does go down to any of these jobs, it is not because we want to increase gas, but because of the way we want to Uh, Mr. Douglas Iike, we have to let you go now. Uh, we seem to have a poor connection. Mr. Douglas, if you can hear us, we, we're having a poor connection. We can barely hear you. We're straining to hear you right now. And we're hoping that we're able to, you know, resolve that, maybe from your end or our end, and we'll, we'll have try, that we'll connection. Try and get back to him. You know, uh, we'll yes, please. But, but, you know, the crux of the conversation is that, you know, you have... Uh, the scarcity is still ongoing. And you can see that because of the queues. Yeah. So you pass through some fueling stations. Um, I mean, fuel station in Lagos, you still find that there are queues. Some stations are not selling. But you find people, motorists, you know, queuing and waiting. And that's also causing the traffic. But we're not even talking about the traffic. We're, cost, we're talking about the fact that the product is not there. If you look at the roads now, you, you can't find the bursts. As of yesterday, there were no buses, and these buses would actually commute persons from one spot to the other. And so mostly you find all of these private vehicles. The question is, if the federal government, yes, we understand that uh, the, the, there was an importation of adulterated product, which cost a lot. And the government said, we're going to cushion all of this. We're going to import you know, 2.3 billion. I remember that. And this week as well, NMPC also started by assuring Nigerians that all of this was going to be uh, a matter of the past. And that's what the NMPC said, assuring Nigerians also in this week. But we're, we're still here talking about the issue of fuel scarcity. Now, in the midst of this fuel scarcity, you also find that the black market is also blossoming. They are making a lot. Uh, how do they even get this product even when others can get it because they get it and then they sell it, you know, at a very exorbitant price? That's, right. that's a very good question. So uh, wh where's the problem? We also um, have another excuse saying because of the crisis that's going on in Russia and Ukraine, uh, this is all going, going to affect the availability of the product because the ship that would actually uh, bring the refined product into Nigeria around this country might just face all of this delay because of the conflict and the situation around the, you know, this country. So I, I really don't know, but some people say that Nigeria might just be taking advantage of the situation as always it's a blame game and it brings us back to the fact that why are we experiencing this why are we also having people buying above the actual price uh, could this be also the issue of subsidy being removed where exactly is going on you know and, and and for me i really don't know maybe we have heard from you know the minister we really don't know categorically what's going on maybe kofi you have an idea yes indeed um it, it's really sad um that the, the the petrol scarcity situation is lingering um, as we speak. Um, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Let's let's not mince words. It's getting worse. Um, and of course, we have you know more people on the queues, spending longer hours. So it's indeed getting worse. The 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 uh, taxi driver who brought me to work this morning, I had to ask him how he's coping. And what he said to me was that um, he had to go on the queue as early as 3 a.m., you know. I saw a long queue. We're in Lagos on a Wolowo Road, which has about three, four, or five petrol stations. People are queuing overnight. They're not sleeping at home just to fill their tanks, which is going to get finished, and they have to go back. So they queue overnight and wait till about 6 a.m. for the petrol stations to open. And then the queue starts moving. So if you don't go there at night to park your vehicle, maybe 8 p.m. or whenever at night, when they stop selling, you stay there till the next day. You will be 
<laughs> you will not have petrol. So you have to go there overnight. Another complaint he had was that, you know, some of the petrol stations, uh, they're used to selling from 6 a.m. Um, but that they've stopped selling from 6 a.m., they're selling from 8 a.m. So it means that even though you stay there from, from, from 8 p.m., you have to stay 12 hours to, to 8 a.m., that's 8 in the morning before you can get fuel. So it, it's, it's getting worse. Um, we've had a plethora of promises from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, led by Mele Kerry. We've had a plethora of promises from uh, the federal government, to, you know, with the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Presil, was speaking. We've heard from the presidency, you know, the president was said to have, have queried the NN, NMDPRA, which is a regulatory body, and then later we heard that, no, he actually didn't query them. Um, whilst we're having, for instance, now daily updates from the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs as regards the situation of Nigerians in Ukraine, the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, neither the Ministry of Petroleum Ministries or the NNPC Limited or even the NMDPRA have thought it wise to give Nigerians daily updates on this national crisis. Nobody has come to the press to say every day, we're giving you updates on how we are doing. They're not giving us any information. Rather, we see Mela Kari on the front pages of, of the national dailies, in, posing for pictures with um, Arabian, you know, um, uh, what do you call it again, Arab Arabian oil oil uh, uh, officials and talking about an energy summit in Abuja. What energy summit in Abuja are you talking about? When in Nigerians don't have petrol, you are, are you organizing an energy summit? So, so these guys have, have, have insulted Nigerians multiple times, you know, disrespected Nigerians multiple times, told Nigerians they don't matter, you don't care about you multiple times throughout this. Mele Kari, you have petrol, you go to work every day. All right? Timmy Presilva, you have petrol, you go to work every day. President Buhari, you have petrol, you go to work every day. Your families have petrol. You're not, you seem not to be concerned about what Nigerians are going through every single day on the streets. Has the President Mohamed Buhari gone on the streets to see what Nigerians are going through? Has he visited any petrol station? In the middle of this, the President hopped on the plane to Belgium. In the middle of this. What did you go to Belgium to say, Mr. President? And he came back to tell us that Nigeria is going to produce COVID-19 vaccines. When Nigerians are dealing with an excruciating petrol scarcity that's getting worse. Nigeria is talking about conditions for the oil and gas companies or the IOCs, the national oil companies to leave. They're leaving. They're leaving. That these companies are leaving means that you guys have failed to manage the nation's oil and gas sector properly. And that's why these guys are leaving. These guys come with investment, they come with technology, they come with know-how, they come with a, a employment, and they're leaving. They're going to pack up their bags and leave. A lot of Nigerian lives have been bettered by this. So what are we talking about here? That is a red flag. By now, the alarm bell should be ringing. And these guys seem not to care. You know, it, 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 it's really unfortunate. And as far as it's, it seems, as far as it seems, it's like, Uh, do, do we have, I think maybe we probably have uh, uh, Mr. Douglas E.K. back on the line, but not, n not that. I mean, I can actually relate. It, it's not a joke, right? It is really not a joke because reading through and following the report, uh, there are some quarters. I mean, if you look at uh, one of the states, I think in Gombe State, uh, you find the fact that the black markets are selling for 300 naira per liter, and that's a lot. If you look at the actual price of 165, and um, the question here is, if if this product is really scarce and people have to queue, how do these persons have access to this product and then sell at this rate? And because Nigerians would always be desperate, and because we would always want to, you know, just survive, we, we would go the extra length, you know, to buy and pay. And in that report, you, you find that the government saying, the federal government or the government saying, they're not in the know, they don't know the sufferings that Nigerians are going through. And I'm asking if, like you have mentioned, uh, you know, those responsible, Malia Kari, you have talked about the president. It, it just totally shows us the disconnects, the people who we elect every other time, whether or not we elected them or they found their way to the system, uh, do not even care about the people, seem to have a disconnect. 
it's a major issue and we understand that for every time you have fuel scarcity we just got into the third i mean this is like the third one in the first quarter of 2023 and and there's a lot to deal with there's a lot to grapple with i mean several businesses have actually shut down because of insecurity issues in the country and now go go to the street and find out how much the cost of transportation it has gone up and you can't necessarily blame them. So you have this depot owner. We're hoping that we have this conversation. The depot owners are saying that, on one hand, that they have paid for products. That's a serious allegation that the NMPC needs to explain. If they're saying that they have paid for some of these products since December, and we're talking about the first day in March, they haven't gotten the product what is going on. Now we have the fact that uh, when did this Russian and Ukraine crisis started? We're saying that, oh, this you know, fuel scarcity might just prolong. The annoying thing is Nigerians have money, but they can't even find the products. And so even with your money, you can't even buy at a very high rate. The fact that petrol has been sold for 200, 165, 180, 170, 190. And we constantly hear those who should regulate ensure that people, I mean, these importers or those who are selling, sell at this stipulated rate. And they keep saying, oh, we're giving sanctions. We have given demands. And all of these things seem to be in the papers. Nobody's doing anything. And it constantly just shows us that the, we, we, we don't care about the people. We don't really we're not even concerned go to the roads and see how many person because what we're talking about is an economy that needs to be productive the productive hours are being reduced every day in traffic what do you expect when people have difficulties getting to work and getting back to their homes and getting back again to work so it becomes very, very, uh, you know, cumbersome. And I'm hoping that, you know, those in this sector, that the, from the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, the president who is in charge, and every other person, Malik Kari, and every other person would explain to Nigerians what is really going on in the petroleum sector with the scarcity of this product. I mean, how come the product is not available for a country that exports crude. We're part of the you know, producing nation. And then we have a quota that we're supposed to produce. Unfortunately, we have to export our product and import it back and have to buy it. Does it even really make sense? That's another thing. And now we don't even have enough for the people to consume. Absolutely, Mercy. It's, um, it, it's, it's a dire situation. You know, it's a dire situation. You've said it all. And uh, one only hopes that uh, it'll get better. Definitely. Well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. Hopefully, we have this conversation maybe tomorrow when we're able to have our resource person join us. Thank you so much for being part of uh, the conversation. When we return, we head straight to our second conversation, all things being equal. Please stay with us.